So my first question is, Christian, why, I mean, it's really simple. Why do you love basketball? Because, you know, it's basically what I was introduced when I was first born and I've just kind of grew up around the game and I've, uh, you know, played it ever since I was young. So I basically live it at this point. And, you know, this is what I do every day. What are your earliest memories playing the sport? Uh, I have some memories of shooting in the backyard with my dad on like the little mini hoops, uh, just working on my shot, working on my ball handling. So, yeah. Okay. What role has your father had in you nurture in your nurturing as both parent and coach? Uh, he's taught me everything I've known in basketball and, you know, him and my mom teach me everything I know and not just basketball, but like in life and how to be a man and just growing up every day. They awesome. teach me everything. Awesome. Um, did you always have plans to commit early regardless of the school? No, I didn't have plans to commit early. It's just, no, I've, I've been trying to wait for the school that fits me the best. When did you decide that committing was the right move? Uh, I decided committing was the right move when I finally, you know, found a school that just doesn't like me, but, you know, stuff off the court not just how I shoot or how I play. They care about my family, my grades, you know, everything. And, you know, the trust I've developed with the Michigan staff and, you know, the whole everybody there. And so that's just why I committed early. Why Michigan? Yeah, so, yeah, like I said, the trust I've developed with, people in Michigan, uh, I don't care about just player, but you know, everything else. And they have, you know, they have every single thing a player could hope for. And the staff there are just incredible. They have incredible resume and they've, they've accomplished many things throughout their uh, coaching careers. I mean, you kind of touched touched on this, but what is it exactly about Jawan Howard and the staff that really intrigued you the most? Uh, just like how they trust me and how they always check up on me. They came out, watched my games when nobody believed in me. They They have, you know, the type of uh, program I would love to play for and the type of coach I would love to play under. So, yeah, that's why. You know, their system right now, it's very pro style. It's rooted in ball screens. And since you're a point guard, where do you see yourself fitting? Where do you see yourself fitting in their system? Yeah, so I, I see myself fitting as like, you know, a leader, you know, for players on and off the court, uh, help helping the program win games, you know, uh, a national championship, things like that. What other programs offer you or really just had any interest in you? What, where other, where, where were you getting um, attention from? Uh, there's like a bunch of other programs, but, uh, you know, Michigan's the one that I chose. So, you know, that's, you, you, that's, that's you the main thing I'm talking about right now. Okay. Chris, you can tell them about the one school that called you that you overheard, you know, the conversation on, um, you know, when, when you overheard the phone conversation. Yeah. The one so particular some, one. Yeah, some schools uh, want to. You can, name, you, can, you, can, you can name the name. Yeah. Some schools wanted to offer after, you no, know, I had already committed to Michigan, but you know, 
schools like Louisville and Tennessee, like schools like that. They wanted to, but I had already committed. For sure. How would you best describe yourself on the court? Uh, I describe myself as like a hybrid guard. You can both do and pass the ball, make my teammates better. I can put points up on the board. I can shoot off, off the dribble, catch and shoot, whatever. And also, you know, leading leading my teammates, helping them make the right plays. Uh teaching t- teaching them where to be on the floor and yeah things like that um do you have someone in the nba that you compare yourself to and if so why uh i kind of compare myself to like a stephen curry chris paul you know because i i can pass like chris paul i i have very good iq on the court and you know i i can shoot like stephen curry i can shoot from far I can shoot off the dribble, catch and shoot, you know, uh, create my own shot. Yeah. Where do you think you see yourself after, like, you know, there's still time for you to hit a growth spurt. Where do you see yourself, you know, if that comes, where do you see yourself develop more? Um, you know, just the physicality of the game I think that that that's what would help me more you know I think that's what girls bird would help me do but I, I don't think it would kind of help me you know create my shot more or help me with my speed or anything like that I think hitting a girl spur would probably make it harder to move around the court like I do right now mm-hmm. so yeah so that's what I think it would do uh, last one for you. If the with the commitment out of the way, what is the plan moving forward in your time in high school? Essentially, what what are you focusing on right now? Well, right now I'm focusing on winning state championship for my school because we've never had one ever in in the history of my high school. So that's my main goal, and I'm just trying to win games, and you know kind of get better as the season go, goes on. Okay. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, what age do you remember Christian picking up a basketball? One. One. Did you know when he was young that basketball was going to be a sport? Yes. Okay. I was overseas, and I visualized it as, as it was yesterday. So you – I was Skyping from across the water. I was in France at the time and he wasn't two yet because I know he turned two in Spain. So I called when he was, when I was in France, he was one years old, he was shooting a little ball into this inflatable with form. And he made it like several times while I was talking to mom on the phone. And I'm like, yo, are you seeing this? And she's like, yeah. So I got ahead on video too, because, you know, we can tape the Skype conversation. And so I was like, you know what? He's doing this, but this was what got me, Zach. He's one years old. I'm not there. Cause I used to lead a country for like two, three months at a time to play. And, um, and I used to bring my family as well. But in his case, he was born here. My other children were born actually overseas. So so I wasn't there, and he was chasing that ball back and forth. It was crazy. He like kept shooting, and the way he was rebounding that ball, it wasn't just a little kid with a basketball. It was like he was possessed by it, you know what I mean, by rebounding and getting another shot and just running after. And he kept doing it, and that's when I knew, okay, at one years old, I told his mom, my wife, I told her, trash all the plastic balls that we have, and give him my NBA ball that was on the balcony. And she, she gave it to him and never touched another size ball again, except, you know, when they play with the little leagues and they give him smaller balls, but he never practiced ever again with anything outside of a men's basketball. So he, he made his first field goal on a men's hoop with a men's basketball at four years old, and he shot his first three at six years old. And he shot his first 100 set at seven years old. So he shot a hundred set and made, I remember when he missed, he missed at 14 and at 98, he missed two shots at a hundred. And it wasn't from the free throw line at seven. It was like 
right there behind the dotted line of the circle. Mm -hmm. So you can see I can chronologically put it together pretty good because that's all we, we, I got it all on tape. I got four terabytes worth of tape. That's awesome. How would you best describe your son as a basketball player? What tangibles make him stand out as a sophomore? Okay, you threw sophomore in there. Why, why, why did you elaborate on that question a little bit more? What do you mean? In the 2024 class, like what, how, with two years left in high school, right. you know, he's already getting offers from Michigan. He's already committed. Right. What, right. what makes him stand out? What, how? Oh, what's, what, what makes him stand out? He, he, he's a phenom. And the problem with phenomenal people, sometimes people don't catch on to it till it's very, very obvious. When you're different, people don't recognize it quickly. Like, and I referred to the Bitcoin before, when you have something that's phenomenally different, like cryptocurrency, like the Bitcoin, when it was offered, it was at $1. And then now 65000 everybody want to invest. So we, we, and you asked him earlier, why the commitment? You asked the question like in different ways, two, three times, because I think what you're trying to ask is, why would you commit to a school when you know there's way more coming because you still got two and a half years in high school left? And and it's hard for him to answer that correctly because he's a humble kid and he's a standout in his own right. What we do know is I'm 6'6 six, six and he's 5'8. And when he got the offer at 5'6, five, 5'7, five, nobody really believed that he should get something like this. Although they know he's been doing this. A lot of people don't know him. A lot of people don't know that he's been averaging 40, 30 points all throughout middle school and elementary school, it's hard for him to answer. I can answer that very precisely. When somebody can recognize the Bitcoin at $1 instead of $65,000 a share, that's the guys I wanna deal with. Because I played basketball for a long time. I played professionally. I've been playing with NBA guys. I've been, I had NBA workouts. I played, I won championship on every level. Junior college, D1. D2, across the water. I had national coaches, Olympic coaches, all types of stuff. And people don't have that versatility at the grassroots level whatsoever. But I got to deal with those people because we're not in the NBA. He's always trained to be in the NBA. Always. That's why his IQ is crazy. His basketball skill is crazy. And he's doing all this at 5'8". So the reverse factor that people don't trust that size thing they because they're doing it backwards they're not saying how's he doing this at that size they're saying oh no because of his size it's almost ridiculous his shooting skill people can emulate that without defense right so they can't shoot 90 percent from the three-point line they can't do it you will be hard-pressed to find 90 percent three-point shooters meaning if i take a college guy and have him shoot 100 college threes. Is he going to make 90 with no defense? No. That kid is. He can shoot 90 out of 100 every day of the week. Every day of the week. And he translates that into 50% on the court with double teams and triple teams. Not against Oak Hill and Montverde. I get that. But there's, you know, understand he's 15 years old. He's not a sophomore in the 24 class. Reclass, reclass who just celebrated his 16th slash 17th birthday. No, he's 15 years old all the way to next year, April. He's a baby, but he got the heart of a lion. He's amazing. He's defying all odds. And if I play basketball, if I've been a basketball player and I see that, I know what's to come. It's an easy calculation. And J. Juan Howard is the only one that made that calculation off of one half. I'm like, that's our guy. Simple. If he's at Michigan, he's at Michigan. If he's at North Carolina, if he's at Timbuktu, we're going to go with the guy that understands before he, the masses understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, talk, you already mentioned Juwan, but 
what are your thoughts of him in a staff after this relationship has now evolved into something long term? What are your what, what what are your thoughts on him? On 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 him and his staff, or just him individually? Uh both. Well, again, I think he's uh, <laughs> he's a he's a twenty year veteran in the NBA. He's a six to seven year veteran as a coach in the NBA. Um, he comes back to his alma mater that he represented. He changed basketball perception in the nineties. Fat five, played with some very good players, made it to the to the finals twice, came up short, comes back and decides, I'm going to put my name back into the mix right here and try to get us that championship that I promised. That's amazing to me. So you're turning down NBA jobs. You know, his sons are there. He's representing a lot of the things that we try to represent. And um, I mean, it's like the perfect fit. Has nothing to do so much as with a college program or what offense he's running, I'm teaching my son how to be a plug and play player. So if you plug and play, how do you know who you're going to get drafted by? How do you know who you're going to play for in college? You can't keep choosing. You got to be a versatile professional athlete, even if you're just in college or high school. And so that's what he's been doing. So that's, that's why Chris stands out. He's able to do things. That's just very high level because he's been preparing for that all his life. Mm -hmm. What exactly, you know, when Jawan, when you spoke with Jawan for the first time or, you know, as, yeah. as it went on, what did they tell you as a parent why your son should attend Michigan? <laughs> the fun part is, I feel like I'm a parent. I feel like I'm a coach that's trying to play a parent. You know what I mean? I've been, you know, I played the game for 10 years myself. I coached at the collegiate level myself, so I signed scholarships. I trained and developed young talent in the city, um, you know, and then I trained my own kids. So I, a, lot of pro, a lot of pros don't have the patience to train kids. So they didn't sell the school at all, like, because they didn't have to do all these things with me because I can do my own research I can look into the program, but what I care about is who my son is representing. And I want to represent somebody who wants to represent him. And I want to represent, and that's of course, the amazing tradition of Michigan. That was just like, wow, it's all in one. So that's why it's so easy to commit to that because they didn't even have to sell us anything. I don't need to see the facilities because we can have the best facilities in the world, the best program in the world, but if the coach and the player don't match, that's why you got 3,000 transfers in the, pro, in the portal because nobody cares about the gym or what lacquer they use to make, the, make it shiny for mommies and daddies. So we didn't have this parental conversation. Chris is a student athlete. He's an A1 student at a private school, at a very good private school in Atlanta. Um, he gets A's, his little brother gets A's. We always speak on academics, but he's a student athlete, so it goes hand in hand. So um, he asked about how he was in the classroom. We, I told him um, it speaks for itself. It's, but he saw him play. He knew what it was. He just knew it. Like, I'm convinced that Jawan Howard was not walking around looking for a 2024 point guard. I believe that Jawan Howard was walking around and stumbled over Christian Anderson Jr. and wanted to commit to him. Because you can't time when you meet your wife. You can't time when you meet a friend. You just meet him. And that's the feeling I had. And that's why it was easy for me to, it was kind of a way of us showing respect back. When somebody does that and put his name out there and put his reputation, all these things we take serious. I don't believe that Jawan Howard just offers kids randomly and reneges later he doesn't offer anybody unless he's committed on and that's what he and that's that's that was the whole selling point and he didn't have to sell it it was just who he was mm -hmm. that's one for you what areas do you see Jawan and company developing your son further along as he transitions to the collegiate level well that's a good well you know um i think that uh 
you know, he's going to have his own philosophies. Martelli is there. Martelli came to the game and scouted Chris, not scouted Chris, followed up on Jawan, you know, um, and, and, and came and see, saw Chris, and he felt like he fits great also. So I leave it up to them to complete him, give him all the know-how that they have. You know, they both have developed NBA talent. They, you know, and so, so whatever the message they're giving, I, I trust them to to cultivate in the in, in my son what they've been doing all their life. So it's not one specific thing that I expect them to do. I trust them. I think they qualified. I think they have a great reputation. They have the action interaction with me and my son and them was was crazy. Martelli is an amazing person. Howard Isley, let's let, we watched him. You know what I mean. We know what kind of person he is. We saw him as a player. Um, then you got Sadi Washington out there, who's an amazing recruiter. So they got a phenomenal staff, and we got to, you know, got to meet uh, meet Tim McCormick out there, who represents the team, and and present, you know, and and it's just, it just, it just feels right in every aspect. And I don't expect it to change at all over the next two and a half years. Oh.